Hi, Eclectic Crafter here. As you can see by my mess, I've been a busy little beaver here. This is for turtle costumes. I haven't really been able to work on it. I had a special order embroidery pattern and we had a four day yard sale. And of course it's canning season. I've got the last of the beans. There's in the pot temperature dropping and I still have all my tomatoes to do and then the apples will be in but I haven't gotten a video up since the end of June I think I've just been so busy and we tore up the back room again to reorganize and what ended up happening is let me give you a little gander so there's my hats which I'm selling on McCurry and Etsy. I had to reorganize those top shelves. It was just falling down on me. And it turned out that my, oh, I still have four tubs, was 10 tubs. I had 14 tubs. Oh, and we got another kitten. So now I lost a whole shelf so they can look out the window. Not cool, man. I don't even have any place to put the embroidery unit for this machine. I think I'm going to have to pack it away because I don't actually use it unless it's a very large design anyways. But yeah, I found a quilt that I had started uh, probably about 15 years ago. I was going to hand stitch it. Well, I did hand stitch some of it. And I have carpal tunnel in both hands. It got where I could not hold that tiny little needle. It was going to be for my first grandchild. Yeah, okay. So, I'm, I did do most of it by machine. I'll finish it up. Bleach it and hope that it gets all the stains out from age. But anyhow. I've got this pattern. This is from the early 90s. I made each of my sons one. I made my older sons first so that I could cut the pattern down for the smallest size, which was a mistake. I normally don't cut my patterns down. I just redraw it on something else so that I keep all my sizes. This is the back. I just enlarged it. The colors I need for the grandson and grandniece. This time I make the, in the jumper that goes underneath it, it comes with a pattern for a, a jumper. You know, one overall kind of thing. And it's odd. It doesn't have any interfacing for the neckline, so it dawned on me. And I, I'm going to go ahead and sew part of it together and then create the pattern for the, inter, for the neckline. Just because I don't feel like digging all the, finding all the pieces again. <laughs> It'll fit the, better this way. But this is the pieces for Jackson. And I created the drawing on the chest plate. Theirs was so generic. You know, it was like down the middle and a couple of lines across. I thought, let's get some more effort going on. Pattern calls for two layers of batting the head oh my gosh the head on this thing was so huge so i redid it and yeah i <laughs> i've got holes in it i redrew the pattern smaller because my sons lasted you know just a few minutes in their head and wanted it off it was so big and bulky So I thought maybe this will work out a little better. The head you stuff, and they were kind of heavy. But this is many, well, it's now a few decades later. And I, the stuffing's actually lighter weight. So I'm going to lightly pat it and just get enough in there for shaping. I'll probably put interfacing on the backs of these pieces I've made it out of flannel, not felt this time, and I'm hoping that will take some of the weight off of it. 
But yeah, the whole head, when you're done, it's just on top of them. And they're looking through their faces in the mouth. So like this section here is going to be the teeth. And that's the face. The whole thing sits on top. There's a liner piece that goes on the inside. And it didn't quite work out. My test needed to be a little bigger. And I threw it away. <laughs> I went, fine, that was done. And this time their belt is not going to be felt. Going through all those tubs, I discovered I have some black vinyl. So I will make them black vinyl belts. Somebody's eyeballs just fell on the floor. Hope you can't see it. I can. Let's see. I used my embroidery program and just made them their belt buckles instead of, you know, iron on decal things. She loves pink. That's her favorite color. Her initial is an L. So hers, I, to make sure it didn't, you know, seem like Leonardo was in the wrong color, I did hers in a calligraphy font. Whereas he wants to be Raphael. And then on the back, I have sewn a little piece so the belt can slide through. And I will probably sew one side of the belt to it so that they don't lose them. They're just children. We don't want them to lose them. So this is the project I'm going to be working on. And I thought I would bring you along. It's going to end up being multiple parts. I'll do a segment, you know, on the chest plate and the this and the that and the whatever. Because when I made these a thousand years ago, of course, I had to do them at night once I got the kids to sleep because my sewing machine was in the living room. <laughs> that was so inconvenient. It took me a couple of weeks to do one. And now... I may have my own sewing room, but I also have a hurt back. So even with a, well, I can show you. That's memory foam. I made a cushion to sit on my chair. I can last a little longer that way. Hey, there's my yarn things on the floor. Uh, but I still can only sit at that angle at the sewing machine for so long before the legs start kind of going numb. And pain. So it will take me a while. His, he's wearing for Halloween. Hers is just playing because I already made her a little red riding hood cape. But I'm going to segue in now to this is what we've been working on. <laughs> ignore my mess. No, you can't even ignore my mess. It just doesn't work. So my great idea for keeping yarn handy was a shoe holder. I hung it over, well, I got a little hook. If I can get it up there. That would hang over my closet door. And that way I stuff yarns in it, wind them up. You know, after you've used them, they flap around, I wind them. But this is what we ended up doing with my closet. We put in some shelves, and I still couldn't fit all my fabric in. Just really have too much. Way, way too much. Yeah, I have to keep that section open because that's our uh, internet cables, connections. All that back there, big old mess. And down here... See, that's two boxes of patterns. And I have another box, that blue tub there, that's antique patterns. They go back 50s and 60s, and I think early 70s. And they're a mess. They were given to me by a friend years ago. And some of the pieces are loose, and the packages are torn up. I just carefully packed them into a, a waterproof container. But the idea is, is that, oh, and I have a filing cabinet that has a bunch of patterns. I'm going to take a picture of the cover of every single one of them. And that big drawer down there 
is going to be my pattern file. Good luck with that. <laughs> Over here, quilts I never finished. There's some rolls of, of small rolls of fabric I still haven't sorted out. That's another quilt I never finished. When the boys were little, we did some pens for school craft sale thing. They had a ball with that. And I used to be a vendor one time for a craft company. And when those were replaced, they let me have them. They have come in so handy. Oh, they don't use that kind of stuff anymore, I don't think. Okay, and paper products we've got. Oh my gosh, it just goes on and on. I've got stuff everywhere. That is a homemade knitting needle. And the other one, I think it's fallen behind or just flat out lost. I took a dowel rod and just kept sanding until I had a, a workable point so that I could have giant knitting needles. But that one down there, they're all wrapped, ready for the shelf, just no room on the shelf. So I've got one, two, three down here. That's wrestling fabric that I think I'm going to put up for sale. My son was into the wrestling, and that's still WWE. That's, that, or, no, WWF. Excuse me. They were World Wrestling Federation, and they had to change it. They were sued. So that's the original. And that's yarn and yarn, and see, it goes on forever. We took all the Christmas decorations out, so this is... We found a chest that still had wedding gifts, and we just had our 40th wedding anniversary. So, yeah. <laughs> so, as you can see by my room... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, please ignore that. I've been so busy. And then people ask me, can you do this or do that? And the desk gets destroyed. I'm trying not to cover up the eye. So far, so good. It hasn't shut off. But, oh, this is these wraps are really nice. If you find one, it's like a blanket with, it's like a poncho. It's split in the front and hangs over. Uh, my sister, one of my sisters got it for me for Christmas years ago. And... I'm always freezing. The air is on. It's, well, it is like 80, 81 outside. Not horribly bad. But in Michigan, if we are low humidity, it's 50%. <laughs> We're surrounded by water. I don't know what to tell you. So, it always feels hotter. Wow. Looking through the lens, my room looks so cluttered yet. I can tell you where everything is. It is a mess, I know, but I know where the stuff is. I'm just, I love doing everything, so. I just sold a whole lot of craft and stuff. Somebody that loves to craft, they can have it. That printer is for sublimation, whereas that is a laser printer for printing. And... Down there is a drawer. One of those drawers have all my soap in it. I use my own soap. I have lichen sclerosis. Well, I shouldn't say I have it. The last doctor I went to, without examining me or testing me or anything, said, I'm sure you don't have it. So, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I didn't even argue with him. I just said, okay. <laughs> he was a horrible person. I'll never go back to him. He was so mean and nasty. But anyhow, I make my own honey oatmeal soap. And it seems it, it I have less situations, you know, less pain using unperfumed, un, it, unprocessed, that, you know, all that kind of stuff. So one of those drawers have just a few bars. I'll probably do a video the next time I make soap just so you can see how I do it. The men in the house, they, they can use whatever soap they want. I can't figure out where to put this. And it's so convenient. But I have no spots left. 
So unless I make the cats give up a shelf, <laughs> that ain't going to happen. The kitten literally pulls all my satin off a shelf so he can get on that one. It's like, no. <laughs> I put that there with the feet out just so that kitten can climb up to get to that window because on the bottom shelf over on the side, one half is satins. I use them for linings and things like that. And he keeps pulling them off the shelves. Okay, so that was a whole lot of <laughs> nonsense for you. But, as I said, upcoming project is turtle costumes. And I'm going to film a few minutes every time I work on it, I think. Uh, just so you can see what I'm going through. Like when I do the chest plate and I quilt it, the first thing I'll do is do the quilting on it. And that's the backing. You don't need anything fancy for your backing. And I was smart. I used chalk and mark, <laughs> mark the numbers on them since there's so many pieces. Um, I couldn't make copies of the instructions. I tried, and it, I just couldn't get it to piece together well, so I got to keep this and look at the aging on it. Well, I smoked for like 48 years, and a lot of stuff had gotten ruined. I had to go through some fabrics I had to throw away. Others I had to soak and clean and even keeping them in plastic tubs if the lid had gotten cracked. You know, ruined fabric. Smoking is detrimental, not to just your health, but to your crafting supplies. But yeah, there's a lot to it. I'll start with the play suit and work my way through. I am literally going to file. See, they they use a casing, and all I have some bias tape, I should say, and I have blue. I'm determined, I had to buy a bolt of green flannel, but I'm determined to use up some of my stuff, so some of the insides have that, but the areas where it'll show, like this is the opening in the back of the jumper, that won't work. No way I'm putting it on the neckline. They, they put it, wrapped it around the neckline, so I'll make my own, either a casing or I'll more than likely, I'll make uh, interfacing. It's just easier, you know. If you've sewn shirts, then you know it's almost like an inside collar. You sew it on, you fold it under, a couple of little whip stitches, kind of a thing to hold it into place, and it finishes off that neckline. But as you can see, it there's a lot to it. Well, this has been a lot longer than I had meant to do. I might have to delete most of that little tour part. But thank you for joining me. And I hope you come back to watch our little adventure and costume making. Bye-bye.